Hey there, I am back with another Free the Pit Friday where we open up some of the rarest decks around and give you guys a chance to experience them for yourself. And for this one, we're going to one of my favorite designers out there, Yoku Playing Cards, for a look at their Inner Circle exclusive Cult Earth deck. Now, if you haven't seen Inner Circle before, you are missing out on the best playing card subscription in the world today. Anthony Holt and designer Alessandro Gagliano have created this really unique and engaging experience with Inner Circle. And it starts with the forums that you get access to with your monthly fee. Those forums not only give you behind the scenes peeks into the creation of the decks, but also progressive and amazing reveals of the in-depth story and lore that surrounds every single one of the decks. It's a lot of fun to kind of read as the story is revealed bit by bit through the forums, and it really brings the decks to life when you finally get them in your hands. Now, of course, you get the decks themselves. Your quarterly package includes a few decks, including the Inner Circle exclusive deck itself. Now, for 2021, all the Inner Circle exclusives are going to be around the theme of cult. It's a series of four cults throughout the world, each of them following a different one of the elements. Now, this is the second cult deck of the year. The first one was this one right here, the, the Cult Air deck. Another amazing deck. You can go check out my review of this one if you want to see this one in more depth. Uh, but for the second one, we go away from air and now start to follow the Earth Cult. So that's enough about the creation of the deck. Let's get into it and find out what this one's all about. Dive into some of the lore. All right, starting with the Tuck Case. These are printed by Bashero and Newton, who always does a phenomenal job with Tuck Cases. They're foil work, they're embossing, some of the best out there. Uh, and for this one, they created a really unique two-piece Tuck Case. You get the pale green main tuck case and then it's fitted with this uh, die cut brown sleeve on the bottom really unique color combination unique feel to the deck overall the green portion is just patterned with a series of vines the earth cult definitely has strong ties into nature and plant life as you'll see throughout the entire deck but the embossed vines form a really beautiful texture in the back and then it's accented with these little hits of i don't even call it like dandelion fluff or just abstract leaves floating through the vines all done in this copper foil throughout really cool look to it overall but what really makes this unique is this simple sleeve across the bottom that brown sleeve is done in a truly unique texture you can see this sort of porous stone texture never seen anything quite like it on a deck of cards and it really gives a unique feel and one that really uh, enhances the the theme of earth overall but that earthen texture and color on the bottom really matches nicely with that pale green to kind of complete the look overall you see in the aqua colored foil on here cult written this really stylized font uh, and then it wraps all the way around the tuck case uh, with that kind of you know uh, just beautiful color combination throughout that bottom sleeves held in place with a bright green wax seal that's stamped with the alchemical symbol for earth on it. And then the bronze colored ribbon that wraps around the top and holds things in place. On the back printed on the brown sleeve, you get the numbering of the deck. They're hand numbered 307 out of a thousand and then the Yoku playing cards. Nothing printed on the bottom, just gives it a nice clean look overall. Uh, now to open this one up because of that ribbon across the top that kind of uh, holds the top in place. The way you open this one up is you actually have to cut the ribbon. The best way to do that without marring the look of the deck is to reach right under here. So you kind of pull this away and cut underneath that brown sleeve, and that allows you to pull the ribbon away. Would have loved a way to do it without cutting the ribbon, but that is the best way um, that I can recommend to open this one up. As you pull that ribbon away, you get the Colt in foil at the top once more with a few leaves embossed on there. Uh, one more look at that, uh, I guess I'll dandelion fluff or whatever it is little foil element on the inner flap alchemical symbols for earth once more on the smaller inner flaps and some beautiful interior printing as well you can see that copper ink and again really going heavy on the leaf work and the nature designs so lots of leaves fluttering their way all the way down the tuck case and that beautiful interior printing so fantastic and genuinely unique tuck case have never seen anything quite like the cult tuck cases anywhere and they did a phenomenal job both anthony and alessandra alessandra in conceiving the idea and bashero and newton in the execution so there's the tuck case now let's get into the cards now right off the bat you probably noticed the beautiful gilding that's featured on this one 
copper gilding uh, that's a great match for the overall green hues that are used in the deck. That copper and green is a really great combination. Super shiny gilding uh, and again just kind of amps up that luxury feel to the deck. Uh, you also get one card that's not printed on the same stock and it's this thank you card here. So not printed on the regular card stock and re instead is done on just a cardboard stock here. Uh, and you get the Yoku in copper foil on one side, their logo. And then on the other side, just a little bit of a thank you note from Anthony and Alessandra. They include this card basically in a lot of their different decks. Uh, just a nice little personal touch there. All right, so there's your thank you card, but now let's get into the main deck and we'll start with the back design. And here it is. So done in shades of green, you get both that darker green and the pale green. And you're definitely gonna get feels of green man right off the bat from this deck. Obviously fitting given that it's the earth deck and given the nature theme that flows throughout this deck as well. Uh, and the character here, I believe actually is the green man himself. Uh, you can see him in a lot more depth that's featured in the green man decks, of course. Uh, but on this two-way design, you can see him there and his uh, hair and his beard all kind of made up of the leaves and the vines that surround him. So lots of leaf work and vine work throughout, and it kind of twists its way organically into his hair and beard. Beautiful look. I love this sort of squinting, uh, skeptical look that he has on his face. Just a very expressive look on his face uh, and a beautiful, ornate design overall. Finishes with a series of white and green shaded borders and then closes out with that nice, thin, dark green poker border at the end. Really beautiful design. Like I said, obviously, if you have the green man deck, you'll see a lot of similarities between them, but I think it's a great use of the theme. So there's the back design. And then into the main deck, starting with the pair of jokers. And for this one, you get what I'm going to call a pair of woodland nymphs, those uh, kind of carefree creatures that you can find in the forest. One female, one male. Uh, the female is done on kind of a non-metallic bronze colored ink there for the Joker Joker. And then the male on this dark, dark green color. Really kind of whimsical look to them. Lots of motion and flow as they have the dandelions and the wind kind of swirling around them as they flutter their way through the forest. But really kind of fun look to the two pixies that we see here. So there's your two jokers. Uh, you also get a double backer. Always a nice little extra card to get. And you get this little ad card here. So it mentions Alessandra as the artist, Anthony Holt, the pair behind Yoku playing cards. A little thank you down here. Uh, gives you here the website where to go if you want to join Inner Circle for yourself. Definitely go do that. And at the top here, you get a poem from Robert Louis Stevenson. Uh, this is a famous poem of his called Heather Ale. And we'll be back to talk a little bit about Heather Ale as we get into the court cards as well. But this poem features in as part of the lore of the deck. So it gets its mention on the ad card. So there you go. There are those. Really nice. Uh, and then we get into the four aces. The ace of spades is the power ace. Features this sort of totem in the middle. Looks a little bit like a classic totem pole uh, with those different creatures stacked upon one another. Uh, and then they sort of abstractly form up the shape of the spade pit behind them. All done in that forest green color with accents of both uh, that sort of bronze copper color and then the lighter green to form the design. Really beautiful look. And I love that sort of rounded bulbous uh, spade pit that's sort of a trademark of a lot of the Yoku decks. That sort of classic shape that they use a bunch. In the corner here, you can see another look at that uh, rounded spade pip and then kind of a calligraphy style uh, index in the corner. Still nice and easy to read, but kind of an ornate, interesting style. The other three aces are not as uh, ornate as the ace of spades, but they all do feature their customizations. Large pips in the center, either that bronze color. Again, that's not a metallic ink, but kind of a bronze or a tan color for the red cards and then the black cards done in a deep, deep green color. And each one of them has kind of a silhouetted or a shadowed image in white uh, that features just some sort of plant life on them in some way. So really nice look to these. I especially love the vines twisting on the heart pips. I think that's a really cool looking design. So very nice aces. Uh, the number cards all feature unique pips as well. So of course you get the green pips here on the spades and one or more of the pips on each one of the cards features an extra little design element. In this case, just sort of a stack of rocks in the center. 
I love the sort of asymmetrical look to this whole thing. Uh, the fact that it's just random pips on the cards, not all of them, not just one of them, uh, but random pips that are adorned with that extra little element. I think it's something that really just adds a little bit of interest. I, I wish more card makers would go with this idea of the asymmetric or non-matching pips throughout. As you get to the diamonds, you can see this little, I don't know what this is, but a little, almost like a dandelion look there in the center of the customized pips on these and that bronze color. I think this would have been really nice to have done in full metallic ink, but I think it's still a really nice uh, earthy looking color overall. And there's almost looks like a lily there on the, uh, on the clubs. I really like the shape of these with the smaller top bulb on the club. And then into the hearts with just a little bit of ivy creeping there on the sides. So very nice pips overall. And now we get into the quartz. And the quartz really tell the story of the creatures, the deities that surround the earth cult itself. And for the earth cult, we're gonna start with the queens with arguably the most important character in any earth cult, the earth mother or mother earth. Known by a lot of different names in different cultures. Uh, the Greek called her Gaia, the Norse called her Sif, uh, the Chinese knew her as Hotu. Uh, so lots of different names, but nearly every culture has some form of the Earth Mother goddess in there. Uh, and this one takes an interesting artistic license on this one. Rather than showing four different goddesses across the different suits, instead shows all of these are the Earth Goddess, but throughout different stages of her life as she ages. So starting out with the heart here, here's the uh, Earth Mother as a young girl. Very innocent, pure look on her face. I love the yellows on this, uh, that two-way court design. And of course you get that nice look at Alessandra Gagliano's phenomenal artwork on this one. And then as she ages, you see her in her adolescent years here on the spade. This is probably my favorite of them. Really beautiful look. I love those sort of circular swirls of the leaves that surround her. Uh, you can see her maybe just coming into her powers and starting to control the elements of earth. Uh, on the club here, you see her as a mother in her later years. Uh, some wrinkles starting to show in her face and kind of that wise uh, knowing look on her face. And here you can really see a nice depiction of the hairstyle uh, that Alessandra Gagliano puts a lot into her art. Very much kind of a ribbony look to them. Thick ribbons or almost like, uh, like thick pieces of yarn forming up the hair. It's a really unique style and one that Alessandra Gagliano uses beautifully throughout her decks. Uh, and then finally you get the wizened old crone. Uh, Mother Earth, and this is probably the depiction of Mother Earth that's most familiar throughout a lot of cultures. She's usually shown as much older and wiser, kind, caring. You can see her there with the earth in her hands as she looks kind of lovingly at it. And I really like the expressions and the, the emotion that uh, they're able to capture throughout the cards. All the cards show different levels of emotion, whether it's disinterest, love, passion, anger, whatever it is through the cards are really shown well. So there you go, there's the four different depictions of Mother Earth on the Queens. Really nice central look at the, uh, at the cult itself. And then we go to the Jacks. Now, in addition to worshiping, of course, Mother Earth, they also celebrate drinks and beverages throughout, uh, alcoholic drinks. Uh, so the story behind this basically is that the cult uh, lived in a place where the water was contaminated. And so they learned ways to use the elements of Earth whether they be plants or other elements of earth and use those elements to distill and purify the water and make it safe to drink. Of course, they're turning them into spirits of some sort. And so each one of these you'll see was basically a human character, but holding one of those spirits in their hand. So here's the fruit of the vines. So the Jack of Spades has kind of a goblet of wine there in his hands. And you can see the vines forming up the crown on its forehead. Then comes the club. Uh, this one I think is whiskey. So you can see the the, uh, I guess, wheat that would be there in the back. And he's got a little cup of whiskey there in his hands. And then as you go to the hearts, of course, wouldn't be complete without talking about beer. And so the classic mug there in his hands. Love that look on his face. This is probably my favorite one, that very serene look, the multicolored hair, the vines surrounding him, just a really beautiful look on this one. And then finally is the most significant of the drinks, uh, this one, you get a little bit of a hint from the stalks of heather that are around here, that heather flower. This is something called heather ale. It's a little bit of a mysterious and legendary drink in its own right. 
Basically, heather ale is a Scottish, be Scottish beverage that's made with heather blossoms, spice, hops, and yeast. Uh, and it's one that was sort of lost to time. The Scots uh, brewed this beverage way back in the day, but according to legend, hundreds of years ago, it was completely lost uh, in, in war. The people who knew how to make the heather ale were completely destroyed, and the secret of heather ale was completely lost. But in the lore of the cult decks, the cult actually maintain that secret and they still consume this beverage to this day. So beautiful story and beautiful little mystery surrounding this. And if you remember, I mentioned Heather Ale, that poem by Robert Louis Stevenson that was mentioned on the ad card, that's where this comes into play. So very cool look. All right, and then for the Kings, we go to one last sub theme, this time looking at four different golems. Uh, golems are basically anthropomorphic, anthropomorphic creatures that are created out of some natural substance. They're not human, they're not inanimate, they're given these sort of human characteristics and behaviors, usually created by some sort of divine creature of some sort. And so each one of these features a different material. So in the King of Spades, we get the stone golem here. Beautiful, beautiful, stoic look on his face, very fitting for stone. Uh, on the King of Diamonds, we get the wood golem. Very wise look, almost looks like an old wizard there. Uh, the king of clubs, so you'll often see golems, most commonly are actually made out of clay. So we get the clay golem here. And finally, on the king of hearts is the sand golem. So it kind of has a whimsical, mischievous look on his face with that kind of knowing grin on his face. But very cool on these. So nice artistic license taken with the golems as the kings. And that is it. That is the deck. Now, as far as the handling, et cetera, on this deck, it's printed on the slimline from Cardamundi, which is, in my opinion, the best stock in the world. Absolutely fantastic handling, even with the gilding, just absolutely smooth as silk on these. So if you do break these out and you decide to handle them, you're not going to have any complaints whatsoever on them. They're going to handle great. That said, this is an art deck above all else this is going to be an art deck i think all the decks from yoku are amazing pieces of art you can certainly use these for gameplay but i don't think very many people are i think most people are going to keep this one sealed and looking beautiful on a shelf now that said before i close things out i will call out one thing if you see these decks out there anywhere you may see that there's two different colors on this one there's one that kind of has a reverse color for the wax seal and the ribbon so this one that we've been looking at has the green wax seal with the bronze ribbon, whereas I've got this one over here that has the bronze seal and the green ribbon. Difference between these, the cards inside exactly the same. The only difference is gonna be in the numbering. The first 200 decks all feature this sort of alternative colorway. So here's number 12. Of course, I get the green ribbon, uh, but for the ones above 200, they're gonna feature the reverse color. So the green seal and the bronze ribbon. That's the only difference between the two. So just in case, if you see those out there, that's what it's about. Anyway, that's it. That is the look at Cult Earth from Yoku. Amazing job as always from the artwork to the story and the lore, the experience surrounding the decks. Just absolutely fantastic. So I'll put in a plug again. Make sure to go check out Inner Circle. I'll put a link in the description if you want to become a member for yourself. Cannot recommend it highly enough. Best experience that I've been uh, part of in playing cards in a really long time. But that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure to subscribe for more deck reviews and unboxings. Let me know what else you want to see, and I'll see you for the next one.